Hello, and welcome to the QDR Crusaders, episode 98, for May 20th, 2014. I actually haven't double-checked that date, so I'm just going to check really quick. Good, it is actually the 20th. Yay. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, well, welcome back to our uh, fifth of sixth for our main six countdown to episode 100. My Ooh. name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and this week's editor, and today I'm joined by... Burned one the special guest coordinator. <laughs> I didn't mess it up that time, I don't yeah. think. I just said it really awkwardly. Yeah, it's yes. okay. Yes, you did. My name is FutterGuy317, and I am the media manager for the podcast. And I'm Atmospock. I do the questions and the DeviantArt and some other things, which are secret. He's quiet, <laughs> Spark, today. Yeah. Am I really? Get your energy up. Get pumped. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, guys. We've got to get Dude, pumped for everything. This episode is going to be so top. Like, uh, so top. Tippity top. Yeah. Absolutely. Tippity top. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm. So there's two things that are happening today, and I wanted to, I wanted to mention this one in particular. Well, actually, I'm going to mention two things, and they're not in the. There's one thing that's not in the the Google document, so don't forget. <gasps> um, the first thing <clears throat> is that we've got our finale spoiler cast after this episode, so I wanted to announce it here just so that everyone is aware. We're going to do a finale spoiler cast, and I think next week we might do a little season four recap thing. But I'll have a talk with the guys about it. Um, but yeah, to to tonight is the finale spoiler cast after the show, so stick around for that if you haven't... Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know where that sentence is going. <laughs> stick around. Um, <laughs> if you haven't watched this, the, the finale, go watch it now because it's amazing and then watch our spoiler cast. Yes, yes, and then we'll do the spoiler <laughs> cast after that. Um, the second thing is now that we're getting up there, this is episode 98, I just wanted to remind people you have about a week and a half now to send in your uh, entries to episode 100 um, so episode 100 again is where we're kind of congregating all your guys' responses and uh, doing a celebratory episode. So mm -hmm. uh, we want you to answer two questions. Uh, what have you enjoyed about the QDR Crusaders over the last 100 episodes? And what have you learned uh, from the QDR Crusaders uh, in the last 100 episodes? Send that to us uh, at our email, qdrcrusaders at gmail.com, either in text form or in a short under two minutes mm -hmm. um, uh, audio clip. Yep, that we've would been, be fantastic. We've been getting quite a few, but like, send in more if you haven't sent one in already. Yeah, just just wanted to do the reminder at the beginning of the episode so that people would be aware. You got a week and a half to do it because uh, the entries will have to be in by uh, May thirtieth. Do yep. it. We love all there entries. Yay! It's true. It's true. Yay. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm done my bit. You guys can <laughs> welcome to the podcast where everyone else talks occasionally. You know, this isn't. That long Dude, of an I, intro, but I never get to talk on the show. I <laughs> never. Come on. Neither do I. So, um, this is like <clears throat> Rainbow Plasma said, our fifth of sixth of the main six episodes leading up to episode 100, and like the past f four. four episodes. There you go. I can count. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've had a special guest on, and we have a special guest on. So this week, our special guest is none other than Rain Gear. So say rain hi. Rain gear. Hello. Yay. Yay. Hi, rain gear. Where does um, that name come so from? So for that's a good question. It's a good question. It's right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we're really grilling him. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It's uh, it's like you'd think it'd be something quite deep to do with me, or maybe not. But uh, it was from a random nickname generator. Ah, that's how I got oh, my yeah. Xbox Live username. That's cool. I'm gonna yeah. continue yeah. thinking that it was something quite deep. Yeah. That the random <laughs> number, that yeah, the random totally generator random. like decided that you needed this deep name or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> random name generators, if they're done well, they can actually pop out some pretty good names. Yeah. And at least they don't have numbers in them. Pretty yeah. sure it's all yeah. Terrence gave mine. Just <laughs> 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 so so rain gear. Why don't you for for everyone who uh, doesn't know who you are? Why don't you describe yourself a little bit for the audience? Uh, basically, I do a lot of, uh, I draw a lot of the pretty ponies, all these colors, and I like to draw weather, I guess. Hmm. And I like to do a lot. How convenient, Rain Gear. <laughs> he draws a lot of butts. Rain uh, Gear, if that is your real name. <laughs> oh. you um, yeah. I do think yeah. that's what you're really known for, though, is some of your more, like, epic landscape, like, uh, weather mm -hmm. pieces and mm. Photoshop wizardry. You do a lot of Some like cool stuff, really cool cloud scenes and stuff too, and yeah. yeah it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's just yeah. a thing with me. I like to draw clouds and I like to draw trees, mm -hmm. sometimes mountains. Yeah, Ra Rain Gear has been in terms of in terms of uh, 
relation to us, Rain Gear has been uh, one of those uh, fan artists that kind of uh, has taken us by surprise over the last year or so, because just because of um, the kind of vast improvement that he's gone through um, oh. in terms of like the quality and like the technique that he's that he's uh, kind of had. So so you know it's it's fantastic to have you on here because you 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 are almost kind of representing fan artists um, <laughs> in in this kind of main six countdown. Um, mm -hmm. So uh -huh. not no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, can we just really big fans. can we just say that we love all of the fan art that you've done of us? It's amazing. Huh? Mm -hmm. I need to get around to some of you. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I actually, I, I actually think I remember um, when you first started watching, because. I don't, did, were, did you come to me in, me in particular and talk with me when you were first kind of starting out? Because I think uh, I remember something about that. It was kind of a weird thing because I guess I was just in a bad place and I uh, I just came across it on YouTube and there was, I think it was episode 8, which is what, Flying? Yeah, something uh, like that. Probably, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a while ago. Oh but, gosh, uh, that's so long ago. <laughs> yeah. I remember speaking with you Briefly, I think, because I just ran across you. I can't. I, my memory's a bit skewed. Right now. Well, I, what I remember is uh, we talked, like like you said, very briefly, and then a little bit after we had talked, you uh, posted this pastel uh, piece that you did of me, <laughs> and it was one of like it was one of the most unique fan arts I've I'd seen, and it immediately kind of tied your username in in my head because with this piece. Oh my gosh, um, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that was that was uh, almost a year ago now. Um Yeah. But but yeah, that, that's that's how I that's how I uh that's how I remember you the, at the very beginning. But I guess, you know, you must have been watching for a good like 8 months by that or even more like 10 months by the time you made that. Yeah, I was um well, I guess I'm a very silent I sort of chime in every so often, and I just post something, and then I'll go hide my hole again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think that's a, you know, I think that's a very legitimate um, thing to do because we we we've had people who are very uh, outspoken in the chat a lot, um, but there are also people like you. There's lots of people out there who are making us tremendous, amazing fan art, or who are just watching the show, but you know, are busy or they're shy or whatever, and so they don't come out to the chat. But I think you know, it's really important that we that we you know acknowledge that you guys have been a huge part of of you know our popularity and and us enjoying making the show mm. so thank you Aww. Aww. anyways we're gonna it's grill sweet. you this episode because you're gonna have to talk about art <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah. you can't be shy today or you can but we're gonna poke you a yeah. bunch oh god so speaking of art because we are an art podcast <laughs> we're gonna move on to the art for this episode and our theme this episode is purple smart Purple AKA smart. Twilight Sparkle. Book AKA horse. AKA book purple horse. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> book horse. Yes. Twilight, which is, I swear we didn't plan this to match up with the finale. It just, it, it totally just did. happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, purple smart. You know, yep. I have a confession to make. Mm -hmm. Um, I keep flip flop. I, I will never flip flop on my favorite main six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like Rainbow Dash, tops. like that's no, there's there's really no question for it. It's it's too far gone. Hmm. But I keep flip flopping on my second best, hmm. and 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 I th I, I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make a statement on the show so that I can't flip flop back again. But Twilight <laughs> Sparkle really is my second favorite pony. Yeah, she really is. Like I just uh, yeah, just I'm sorry Applejack, but it's, <laughs> Twilight Sparkle I don't know to... is like the dark horse. Like she's always consistent and like pretty much everyone's like up there in their favorites but like people don't normally list her in there there's not a lot of people who dislike twilight Sparkle. yeah she's yeah. very concerned anyways I, anyway. I wanted to make that confession because i feel dirty because i've <laughs> always talked about applejack and i still still think applejack's great it's too hard <laughs> so much pressure. well maybe uh. some of this art will convince you so we're gonna <laughs> jump right into our first piece which is called twilight magic and before we let me <clears throat> take away the his thoughts on this piece uh we have brought up this piece before i have you have brought up this piece before i um, swear at some point during this podcast i'll stop talking <laughs> uh it, this is kind of similar to the piece that we brought up uh last week with um that atmos spark had brought up previously um but we didn't get a chance to feature it fully so this is the same thing with this piece 
Um, Rainbow Plasma had brought it up previously, but we didn't get a chance to feature it. So, with that being said, Rain Gear, um, would you like to introduce us to this piece? What speaks to you? Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess the first thing that hits me is just the uh, the smooth, because I'm kind of obsessed with some shading, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just the smooth shading done all over Twy. And, like, it feels painterly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, that's it still great. feels like this ultra high refined piece of art in the foreground. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think smooth is a really good word for it, actually, mm -hmm. um, because that's kind of the feeling I get with there. It's got it's got a certain flow to it. Um, it's not it's not very rough around the edges in a lot of ways. Um, there's very little hard edges, and, and and everything's kind of like a curved line, and it all kind of it's kind of consistent throughout the entire piece. I really like that you use the word painterly because like some people or sometimes people will kind of try to, I don't know, be afraid to use the word when they see like really smooth shading like that. But I still feel like that kind of gradient in color where it's like yellow, peach, purple, like dark is still something that you see in a lot of like traditional painting of blending in colors to each other like that. Um, normally people tend to use it when they're talking about like the tree in the background, how you can see like individual brush strokes or the magic towards the bottom where you can see like the actual brush strokes where like that is like a painterly thing where you show the stroke of said tool that you're using in this case, a digital brush and, but you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, even within twilight, you can see brush strokes like in her wings and stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, the shading is very smooth. Like there's, there's a lot of steps to the gradients and stuff <clears throat> and especially like on twilight's face and body. And her ear, especially, there's a lot of really smooth shading going into it. But in some places, there are there is like this gradation or step of of that, and it definitely gives it a very painterly feel to it. Um, yeah, I I I, I, I have no <laughs> words. I, I love it. This is one of my favorite pieces of all time. Yeah, I'm I'm putting it out there. This is one of my favorite pieces of all time. I can't describe mm -hmm. why, but there's just something that clicks in my brain when I look at it. It's great. Can we move on I to the uh... really really Go on. Go ahead. <laughs> right. No, not the, this the, again. All right, fine. The, the I will spiral go. composition in this thing is fantastic. <laughs> Are you still giggling at me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the spiral now. Now that we've finally gotten to the point, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Follow those purple like yeah. streaks of light yeah. that kind of look like they're coming from a horn and kind of don't. I guess it is. But from like bottom center up around to the left and then down towards her hair and then her eyes the whole thing is just a spiral it's fantastic and that's the and that's the reason why i like this one well yeah it follows through right through the wing yeah it kind of almost originates from her horn but oh, it does it does there's no kind of here it does yeah <laughs> and, and then but instead of going out of her horn to follow the sparks it kind of travels around her down her body and then spirals out yeah the whole mm -hmm. yeah i really like that well, you see, I look at it differently. I, I look at it the opposite way. Yeah. As in, it goes from the bottom into her. Right. Because yeah, it's then, not okay, just her yeah. horn. The, her horn is part of it, but it also goes through her wing and into her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying, is it... Her, yeah, well, whatever, yeah. <laughs> it's just opposite. I think everybody sees the spiral. It's a fairly obvious spiral. Yeah. Just two different ways of looking at it. I really like how magic was portrayed in this uh, because you get these like really bright dots and spots and stuff like that, but you also get these circles that are almost bubbly, kind of like champagne or or something like that. I it's pronounced champagne. <laughs> champagne. <laughs> it's it's definitely an interesting twist on on magic, and I like it. I like seeing yeah. what different artists will uh, interpret magic as. Yeah. Yeah, there's always this kind of ambiguity because it is kind of quote unquote simple in the show, just an aura, but mm -hmm. everybody likes to take it in their own particular direction. And this one seems a little bit more bubbly, yeah. seems a little bit more, uh, I don't know what the right word is, elegance, not it, but but fancy. <laughs> yeah. Her yeah. horn looks like a sparkler. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it that's, does. That, that's true too, mm -hmm. for sure. What's the, actually, they've done that on the show, like when they're trying to put the big or some major sleep or whatnot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or some minor, mm -hmm. excuse me. Yeah, yeah, when when there's, like, super magic going on. <laughs> Thanks for the sound effects. Also, that wing. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, my goodness, that wing looks so beautiful. <laughs> I love I love how it's kind of in between the show style and, like, the whole individual feather approach. 
because mm -hmm. there really isn't like individual feathers otherwise those feathers would be super super long but like it's definitely more detailed than what the show would provide hmm. it is cool i'm curious to know if like the artist went out of his way to like find like references of like birds and stuff to like try to draw that wing or if it was just kind of like you know <laughs> I, I don't know yeah it's weird because with pegasi i always forget that the wings have to do with birds you know hmm. of course of course they do in of our world always but, had like, wings. <laughs> <laughs> but like for some reason it just seems so natural to me that like oh those are just horse yeah. wings yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a normal thing <laughs> yeah yeah the, the amount of times i have seen a unicorn in a commercial or like a movie and had to go like oh wait that's not normal it's <laughs> incredible <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to try to hand food to a horse and be like, oh, you can't make this levitate? Oh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I really, really like about this piece uh, is if you look at the tail, there's this outline, uh, which is like a very light yellowy kind of outline, and also in Twilight's mane, and it kind of separates her from the background, uh, almost gives her kind of a silhouette feel. Um but yeah, I don't know. Like bending around her. Yeah, I just I really like it. I like when artists put that like extra little light um, outline around their characters in certain mm -hmm. places and stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, uh -huh. also, I'm I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna talk for the rest of this piece because all of you apparently <laughs> don't have any points. So I'm just gonna keep talking about it. Um, the face for some reason and the eye. Mm. I don't know why, but. I've talked in the past how when you try to make it more 3D, you can often fall into the uncanny horse valley. Um, this is like one of the best depictions. It just looks so natural. It, it nothing sticks out to me as weird. Uh, it's it it my brain completely interprets it as 3D. I don't know what they did with it, and the <laughs> eye is very pretty as well. The facial expression is a lot of fun. It gives off a lot of good emotion, which is probably the reason why I really like this piece. <laughs> uh, just the face in general gives so much to this piece, and it's really focused on because of that spiral. The spiral spirals in towards her face and towards her upper body. It frames her. Mm -hmm, exactly. <clears throat> and and I think that's really yeah, important. It, it, it provides like a, a break <laughs> between her and the background, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think why the face looks so like adorable and it's not super uncanny is because like it isn't too overly 3D because like that again that's that zone of where it becomes a little a yeah. little awkward because it starts to look like uh you know like 3D modeled ponies where they're like super actually round there's <laughs> and there's a lot in Twilight's face that isn't like overly defined like uh like in the colors that are showing shading and 3Dness like it's just it varies from like a slightly bright peach to like a duller color that's almost like a dull yellow or something it's very subtle. um yeah which is interesting because it looks like all over twilight's body the artist is playing with compliments so like playing with the comments of compliments of colors and i've mentioned before that when you mix uh or have color compliments next to each other or like blend into each other they neutralize each other mm. and they kind of almost create a sort of gray which is kind of what's going on in areas of twilight's face and if you look at kind of like her haunch and her back like those in-between parts in there where it looks peachy, there's kind of like a gray area where it's almost we can't tell what color it is. Yeah. Um, and it's because like this, almost this entire piece is kind of made with this playing of compliments. We have like yellow in the background and then obviously uh, purple twilight and like pink of her magic and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. right. right. Well, one more thing before we move on. I could hear you taking in your breath there. Um, <laughs> so the, re the reason why this one is really special to me as well is because this piece is the biggest motivator for me for why we're having this main six countdown i've been talking about it for over a year but seeing this piece and going i have to feature this somewhere <laughs> and and that's really what motivated me to kind of get the ball rolling on this main so the reason why we're having this main six countdown and having all these guests on and it all snowballed from this one piece in my head this piece right here yeah wow mm -hmm. Thanks, Twilight. Being <laughs> history. All right, now we can move on. Yeah. We can get past it. I can cry later. I just I have one really quick thing to say that goes kind of off of Burns' thing. Um, I just find it really interesting that like there are places in Twilight, in for instance, her front hoof and in her haunch and stuff like that, that are very gray, very desaturated, and no longer really purple. Um, but it's interesting how our minds kind of interpret that as a variation of purple because of the surrounding colors and compliments and stuff like that. I don't know. It's 
interesting science it's cool let's keep talking about this piece let's just no it's <laughs> one art piece i'm okay with it it's my art piece let's do it yeah, we have to move on to the next piece no don't do it i'll be back later <laughs> uh, so our next piece is called angry twilight by cannibalis and this piece shows twilight on fire <laughs> yeah he's on fire so it's a, it's a yeah. good scripter i guess yeah so um rain gear would you like to describe what you see in this piece? I swear to God, if you say she's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Well, you know, I would. She kind of looks on fire to me. <laughs> uh, yes. Just, you know, the bright orange. Note to self, never fire. invite rain gear onto <laughs> podcast. Okay. No, no, sorry. No, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, but uh, just, I guess. Like the only thing about this that really gets me is like the fire itself. It's so flowy and it's got all these little particles coming out of it. Everything really sort of well fire, but it like, explodes like in my face with all its brightness and super high vibrance. Hmm. Yeah. The uh, the artist cannibalist said just some fire practice in the uh, description, and I think they need to stop practicing. <laughs> I think they're never. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I could practice like that. I think they're making the rest of us look bad that can't draw fire. Because <laughs> yeah. fire is hot and this fire looks hot. Hmm. Super hot fire. I really, like you said, Rangier, I really, really like the particles that are coming off of the fire. You get like these sparks and it's just like a mix of oranges and yellows and stuff like that. And also there's kind of this smoke to, uh, to it too. So like in between the fire... Um, but it's kind of engulfed by the fire, this this cloud of smoke. Um, it really adds to it. And just like the layering of colors and stuff like that, it really does make it look bright. It's uh, really, really, really well done. I guess having that dark background in contrast with like, super bright flaming twilight really helps bring it out too. Mm -hmm. Even the, char the character itself just looks great. I mean, it's kind of plain, but yeah. I guess the Rapid Dash Twilight was just white. Yeah. Mm. That is a pretty good representation of her. Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> yep. is pretty well done. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I like the fact that, you know, we described the fire as being really flowy, but also had tons of particles, and it, and it kind of combines this textured look you know, a lot of times texture can add grit and it and it adds an unevenness to it. And, and and there's a way that it kind of bounces off of these two elements bounce off each other because you've got the you've got the grit and you've got the texture going with the smoothness and the curvature of, of, of the inner fire and and they and they work together really well. Mm hmm I also really love her expression. <laughs> it's just so angry looking, like, you know, the title of the piece. <laughs> um but I guess that does kind of match what she looked like in the episode. So, uh, plus I do I do really love the painterly style that she's drawn in, because um, there is quite a bit of sh smooth shading going on there, but you can still see like brush strokes and stuff, and uh, it's it's kind of like uh, dirty or slash messy, but I I really like that in in a piece like this. Also, that reflected lighting on Twilight is right. fantastic. <laughs> like the yeah. yellow light on the white body. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she looks really, really hot along like her back and on top of her head and that air. It's like white mm -hmm. hot, which is where the fire is, and it looks great. <gasps> Yay. There, there, there is some sort of technique to making nice. white look hot. Mm -hmm. And I don't... It's not as easy as just having a really bright white surrounded by darker colors... There's there's some there's a there's some sort of you know magic behind that you know there really is yeah because like it... so, go on <laughs> oh, I was just gonna kind of go on the whole white hot idea but it's kind of weird because I look at this and like I'm talking about how saturated it is and how like bright it feels but it's not hurting my eyes to look at it hmm. it's kind of like a weird middle ground hmm. got. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, if you look at just, like, a white sheet of paper or just a white screen on your, like, uh, on your monitor, it doesn't look very bright, like, because you don't have anything compare it to, to compare it to. 
uh, this is kind of a middle ground where it's it's definitely very bright because it's surrounded by these yellows and these reds and oranges and stuff like that. Uh, and then you get like other pictures that we featured before where it's a very blinding white light because it's surrounded by the correct colors to make it really stand out and pop out and it <laughs> physically hurts your eyes. But <laughs> I will never live that thing down. Nope. Never. Uh, yeah. Some things just live with us forever, but deal with it. <laughs> yep. I, yeah. People quote stuff I say on the show all the time, you know. Not every single time I talk to a fan or something. <laughs> Isn't it, yeah, well, we, we all get it, because it's not like I just had fan art made of me from a certain one thing that I said once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, like, the, what is it, the inadequate horn thing is still going strong. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Bring yeah. it up. I'm glad, I'm glad that I, I tried that to doing? subtly step around it, and you tripped me and smashed my face right into it. Great. It's thanks. because there was just another piece made recently that made me get Yeah, yeah thank I know. That's the one that right, fine. Let's, let's let's go back and talk about this piece. Does it have really good value burned? Tell it, me about its value. It does. That's exactly what I was going to talk about, God actually. Damn it. Hey. And it's because of the use of value uh, that uh, makes it the brightness of this piece not kill your eyes and burn Ted's eyes. So, <laughs> For God's sake. So it's, oh, no. the, quick, uh, no, quick, that must bark, moo. <laughs> what's, what's, what's really awesome about this piece is the fact that there is like inclusion of dark areas and dark values of color around. So like obviously the background and I actually really like the dark little corner. Don't ask me why. Hmm. Um, but that dark corner <laughs> really does an awesome job of making the parts that are bright in this piece pop out. So what makes the flame look so intense, if you will, and like an actually really bright flame is the like highlight of white on the top of uh, Twilight. So like on her back and on her ear. So like the part that actually will like hurt my eye to look at somewhat or my brain tells me, oh yeah, that's bright to look at is like her ear and like that part of the area where like the flame is most intense on top of the character's body. And it can be that bright and it's tell it's telling my brain that it's that bright because of the dark areas around it and like that dark corner having that juxtaposition of color like Ted mentioned earlier. Hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's that play with um like white on the tip of the character and then not you not using that white anywhere else besides in like the most intense parts of the flame and just on top of the character so it's like yes uh twilight is white in like the show you know but uh in this piece she's not actually just colored white she has all sorts of oranges and yellows and ambient lighting hitting her hitting her making her actually look uh visually interesting and then saving that really bright value of white for the intense areas that are gonna like tell our eyes like yeah that's that's hot <laughs> it's it's interesting because uh the the fact that like the most intense part of this piece is not in the fire but on twilight uh it's it's kind of weird but like it kind of makes sense visually um in that you know the, the fire is orange and there are whites and stuff like that but like you said the brightest point is on twilight and huh mm -hmm. it's kind of cool yeah <laughs> um cannibalus is an incredibly talented artist and I recommend that people check out his gallery because mm -hmm. there are some things that he does that just makes the only word that I have is realistic it's it's uh, it, but it's not quite that there's there, there's a proper term for it but but um, he really brings he really brings scenarios like these to life and, and makes them feel tangible mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely recommend uh, checking out his gallery yep so definitely just before we move on just a real quick thing um, you don't often see it, but this person has, uh, Cannibalist, has linked to someone who asked in the comments um, the tutorial that, you, that they use to make the fire. Hmm. Which is not something That's you cool. see very often, because this person, apparently, a Cannibalist, I don't know, male or female, didn't really, obviously didn't really know how to do the fire properly, and then they saw this tutorial and was going from that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. All right, so we're going to move on to our next piece which is called Twilight by My Magic Dream, who I absolutely adore as an artist. Um, but Rain Gear, why don't you start us off with this piece? All right. Uh, I would like to start off with something that seems artistically valid, but oh my god, I am obsessed with clouds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the clouds are artistically valid. Go on. Yeah, just like the... Because I can really appreciate... Just clouds in general, I guess, but uh, just the way they've done them with the light and just how they tie the sky in. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, from your experience, tell us a little bit more about um, 
kind of the technique behind that yeah. that you see because you've you've worked with cloud making a lot and you really enjoy it so is there any particular technique that my magic dream is using here I would just like to know what the cloud expert has to say about said clouds. I mean, I have my own artistic <laughs> theories about why these clouds are, you know, quote unquote, awesome clouds. Burned but... is so far down the meta, like, <laughs> rabbit hole. We've lost him. <laughs> I have clouds of butt installed on my head. Well, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, jeez. Right here. I'm, I'm now addressing you, and, and, and I'm going to shut out all other noise. Would you like to tell us more about the clouds? Okay. Well, I'll try to tell you as much as I can. But uh, what it looks like is just a lot of uh, like a custom brush that they've got. It's got like this crazy texture, and you can see it if you look at the. It's on the left of the piece, the cloud just above the mountain. Mm -hmm. got, yeah, that's so specific. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it looks really rough around the edges. Yeah, it's quite rough, and it's got all like these. It looks kind of like a watercolor. Kind of smudge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah but it's like that. But uh, like they've just gone through that and just scribbled a lot, and then added these colors on top, just layer by layer. Because they started with that purple that you can like the really dark purple. Mm. It's just gone over and over. Yeah. And just that. It's, yeah. There seems to be kind of two parts to this piece in that there is the scene. The, the, the mountains, the grass, and twilight, of course. And then there's kind of like the atmosphere. There's the, there's the beautiful, beautiful sky with the stars and, and tons of different lights in the background near what I'm assuming is some sort of sunset or sunrise. It's the twilight of the day. Ah. Um, <laughs> and, and also the clouds is part of that kind of atmosphere as well. So um, whereas in most of the field and in most of twilight, there's not a, lot of, there's not a huge amount of texture there's so much in in the, in that atmosphere yeah uh i really like the way that my my magic dream has used mostly purples and peaches in this uh including like if you look into the stars a lot of the stars are are blues and like whites and stuff but there's like these dots of purples uh i don't know it gives it this really cool feel and it almost reminds me back to our, our purple episode of some of the pieces that we featured there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I I would like to hear Burns' take on the clouds as well, because <laughs> I know you're just dying to tell us. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to say, if you, you, you are really interested in clouds and like what goes into making them look so awesome and fluffy and stuff, an awesome artist to check out is a artist uh, named uh, what is it John Constable. I believe he's a romanticist in the some year I can't remember from my art class. <laughs> anyway, A plus. <laughs> <laughs> but he he was really obsessed with painting clouds as well, and he did a bunch of cloud studies, like hundreds of them. I mean, there's just like hundreds and hundreds of these just paintings of clouds that this artist did, and they're awesome. And it's again. Uh, one of the main things that he was doing in his art pieces is he was playing with a, he was playing with values that mix mixing of like darker on the top or light on the bottom or vice versa. In this case, it's light on the bottom, dark on the top because there's the light sources, the sun underneath it, right? Um, but why these clouds specifically in this piece of Twilight by My Magic Dream, why they're so awesome, I feel like, is because they're playing with that concept of complement or that concept of contrasting colors where you have like a dark value of a color on like top of the cloud and then the uh, like another contrasting color creating on the bottom of that so it gives the cloud volume it gives it space it uh, like light hits that and it becomes tangible and becomes really pretty too because they're such like extreme colors that react with each other so well um and one of the things i feel like is the strongest in all of my magic dreams work is always like always his color work just always the kinds of colors that he paints and how he how he uses them together um like orange and violet are direct compliments mind you but I feel like in this case, they kind of, they, I guess they kind of act like it because there's still a lot of blue orange in this piece, if you will. <laughs> there's like orange so in the sunset blue and blue orange. in the blue in the sky. Yeah. And then you have like yellow on twilight. There is a point where it reaches like absolute like bright yellow, just like right on the top of her hair by the tip mm -hmm. of her ear there, um, giving you that kind of actual legit compliment. So it's like it's an off compliment. It's not quite 
uh, the exact opposite of violet, but it's like yeah, a little there, off there's something you know I mean? there's something there to do between the orange and the purple, but it's almost like when they when they get closer to each other, there's there's this there's this kind of aspect of uh, like a peach and a plum. They they seem to really work with each other really well for some reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and so that's that's kind of what we're seeing here. It's not the direct compliment, like you said, orange and blue, but I like to think of like peach and plum. It's it just. Very fruity is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, I think I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I just say how this much piece I... looks delicious? <laughs> can I just say how much I absolutely love the little streaks of yellow and pink and peach that are running through Twilight's hair in this piece? Her hair in general is really awesome. Yeah, um, that's definitely one of my favorite parts too. Like those like really bright specular highlights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know my magic dream does that quite a bit where he he throws in just some like brighter colors into mains or into like outlines of characters and stuff like that. I am definitely a fan. (laughs) The the hair and the background Mm -hmm. really make this one for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stars. This is pretty hair. (laughs) <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I like my magic it's, dreams are. It's beautiful piece. It's beautiful background. It's beautiful pony. Beautiful piece. I also, like, I also like the character style. Uh, something we mentioned before we had picked the piece, but it's it's always unique with my magic dream. It's always some unique take on a character. Even like in his anthro work too, it's always super just unique is basically the buzzword here. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and unique to him and unique to his art style. And he's made something that, you know, is his and his style. And some of the artists uh, like... I was always sought after with artists and stuff, but I, you know, I really like it. I like this piece. I like the character. You, you know, Burned, you were absolutely right about one thing. So when we talked about this before, I wasn't going to veto this piece, but I wasn't as quite as enamored as, as uh, everyone else was. But you're you're absolutely right that this this definitely grew on me. Um, the, the, her, <laughs> her facial expression, her body position, at first I was kind of if, iffy about them. Um, but this is one of the few art pieces that actually did absolutely 100% grow on me. Hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's a really it, it's a beautiful piece overall and i'm glad that i gave it the the extra bit of time in order to get used to it i guess because it, it's <laughs> it's great i know like before we started recording um because we we go through a ton of pieces of art and stuff oh my god so much this <laughs> yeah <cow. laughs> um there was a couple of, of comments about like how her face was a little derped or whatever but i like it um because it is in my magic dreams style in that it's you know kind of pointed a little bit and like and it's not derped it's different yeah it's different and it's i i like i like the whole pointedness to the face especially like the way that my magic dream does it where the nose is slightly upturned and uh you know the the, it's more of like a a human-esque face with the the little cheek uh out Mm, crop thing i don't know (laughs) yeah 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 i know what you mean protruding Um, cheek yeah, I, I really, really enjoy uh, My Magic Dream's character style. And uh, so for this this piece, for me, was like an instant choice. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And, I just really enjoy it. And fun fact, at time of the recording, we were recording on May 16th. It was made five days ago. <laughs> yep. So it was made on May 11th, yeah. 2014. So that is... We, we thank you very much for making <laughs> this piece because... Uh, Keeping up with current glad. art. Exactly. Yeah. We're keeping up with the current art. We had a really old art like a week ago or so. Mm-hmm. There's there's talent across all time periods, uh, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. I might have to contact my magic dream. <laughs> my yeah. Oh, hey, that suppose. would be awesome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one final thing about this piece, unless someone has something else to say about it, because it is nope, amazing. No, we're moving on. Get one more. Go. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we have featured some silhouette pieces before. And I really like the way that My Magic Dream portrays uh, Twilight in a kind of a semi-silhouette here because her face is, is lit up. Uh, like, you can see the details in her face and you can see the details in her wings and stuff like that. But uh, the inner, like, her inner body and the the inner parts of her wings and stuff like that are very dark uh, because the light is from behind her, whether it's from the stars or from the, the sun. Um, and I just, I really like how it was portrayed uh how how twilight is portrayed as a silhouette in this piece mm. yeah. selective lighting yeah as long as it looks good it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> one more piece guys let's do this all right so uh our last piece for this episode uh is called transcendence by cosmic unicorn and this was made april 7th so not as 
short nice time try, ago. Though. It was a really good try. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's relevant still in season four. <laughs> it, is, it is absolutely relevant. Yeah. Uh, so, Rain Gear. I'm going to request that perhaps we try to think of it more artistically than, as opposed to... No, you know what? We'll, we'll handle the rest. You start us off with whatever you want to, and we'll pick up the slack from there. <laughs> okay. So, go ahead. I guess I'll uh, start the obvious, like the uh, crazy surreal side that this has. Mm. Well, the uh, pony heads and the, the I guess quadruple wings. <laughs> She's got going on in her Super Saiyan Twilight form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's re- that's really interesting how how that decision was made, and and I I'm not of a surrealist mindset, perhaps. So I I don't I guess. I guess in a way this is kind of describing all of her experiences so far and all of the sides of her that she's kind of come to to know. Um, I'm not sure. It's really cool though. It looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Guessing the quadruple wings is something to do with the whole four alicorns power that she had going on. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I really like that. The interesting thing is this piece was made April sixth. Yeah. So it. Uh, like this piece was actually made before, like we had kind of seen, actually seen the episode, and, like the finale and stuff, and like known that she took on those powers and blah right, blah. Like, because technically, mm-hmm. if you watch spoilers, you'd know that there was like a Super Saiyan crazy Twilight because right. like there was the toys and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. like the appearance of Twilight is is not a coincidence because that was yeah. released before. Mm-hmm. But but I like. You know, I, I still believe, even if it is a coincidence, it can still give meaning in the piece. It gives mm-hmm. alternative meaning. Just because the artist didn't put the meaning in there doesn't mean it, it doesn't symbolize something. Yeah, um, correct. You know? mm-hmm. I actually, I really like the way that Cosmic Unicorn used a rainbow in this piece to kind of color the tips of Twilight's wings, a la season finale, season four, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it's it seems very natural because it, it is just like a rainbow and just going over her wings. And I don't know, it's just something about the way that the the color hits her wings gets me, like, in a really good way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I think I think when we, again, we're, we're kind of referencing it. I was going to say to, to, to Rain Gear, so thank goodness you didn't say this, uh, but I was going to say we, sh- we shouldn't focus too much on, on the impact it has to do with the finale, but there is some aspects that I did want to talk about because I, we don't want to get caught up in it too much because it's a fantastic art piece. Mm. But, you know, we've, we've got the, the, the Tree of Harmony or whatever the heck the official term is down there on the bottom that blooms into this flower of the of the broken down castle, mm. that the castle is where she's coming out of um, with the with the with the, the chest that they put the keys in and it's all intermingled within this kind of flowing picture as you move from top to bottom or bottom to top. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that you ma- you said the word flowing because if you look at the background, there is kind of this texture that is, I can't really make it out if it's actual shapes or if it's literally just brush strokes that are flowing throughout the piece. It looks like uh, just brush yeah. strokes to me. Yeah. So it, it definitely has that, that flowy feel to it. It's almost like we're looking through it just just through through a little bit of oil and water, you know. Mm-hmm. It's got that kind of sense to it, like a like a little film on the top of the of the top of the art piece. Speaking of rainbows, one of, one of the heads of Twilight has the rainbow like eye thing as well. Rainbow mm-hmm. eyes, mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah the the texture in the or the thing going on in the back was actually like a texture. It's like a watery like film texture or something. If you've seen marbleized paper, it's something similar to that. Um, where it, it's actually going through like the entire from the top all the way to the bottom of the entire piece. And it's actually really cool and gives it a lot of um, substance. But uh, like Rain Gear mentioned in the beginning, like this piece is awesome and surreal. And I don't find that you... I find that we, like as like the computer exterior and just, I don't know, as bronies in general, don't see a lot of like surrealist pony art that's like really, I don't know, as awesome as this is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really glad we got to feature this piece because I actually talked uh, to Cosmic Unicorn about this piece uh, a little bit personally. Uh, we actually got to hang out at Emerald City, Co- Emerald City Comic Con, and she was giving me a ride back to my sister's, and she was talking about this awesome, crazy sketch that she had been working on and wasn't complete because we were talking about like pony artwork that she hasn't uploaded, DeviantArt and stuff. <laughs> and then like a week or two later, after we had talked about that, she uploaded this to DeviantArt, and I like got to see it for the first time. 
and see like the craziness she was talking about because when she was describing it to me it didn't make any sense when she was talking <laughs> about like the tree and the upside down like lily like lilac thing with like a castle in it and then like twilight has like seven heads and like, what are you talking <laughs> about but it was really awesome and i'm super glad that she like finished it and uploaded it yeah mm. yeah yeah and, and it shows that she really she had a plan for it you know it was an inspiration about it um which is really cool i i appreciate both sides of it when when things happen naturally but i also really like when when these these this inspiration kind of strikes and you just have to make this 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 idea that popped into your head and, and what an idea hmm yeah. i really really like the whole like concept with the tree being flipped upside down and kind of coming like its roots are this kind of flower that the box had come from but instead of the box sprouting it's the old ruins of the castle and it's just it's such a cool <laughs> concept like the more i think about it it's ah so good so good <laughs> very 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 good yeah i also really like um cosmic unicorn's main style for twilight and twilight and twilight and more twilight <laughs> <laughs> and twilight <laughs> yeah <laughs> What's really funny is when I watched the episode and saw like all the ponies in their crazy like form, I kind of looked at it and was like, oh, oh God. <laughs> like, but I keep seeing a bunch of artists interpretation of it, like yeah. Cosmic Unicorn's here and then a bunch of others like uploaded to DeviantArt and the artists make a really good job of it. They yeah. Do a really good job. Yeah. I guess ah, the initial shock has sort of worn off and has been for a while because the Rainbow Toys have been out for a while. Yeah. Mm. So people have had time to know. sort of get over the shock and make interpretations of it yeah hey, i only saw it last week when the episode aired <laughs> yeah we've avoided I, I spoilers spoiler for free for all of that all i all i had heard was that there was something to do with rainbow power and i was like nope 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 <laughs> and i managed to stay spoiler free yeah. but that's a lot of finales and openers too is just rainbow powers i mean that's how the day saved every time is rainbow exactly. magical so powers nice. like discord is... nightmare moon and, uh, it's true. rainbows <laughs> anyway yeah um, and once again, we do see a different interpretation of magic, too. Uh, there's this kind of circular, spherical aspect to magic in this piece. Uh, whereas in our first piece, it was kind of these sparks and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. I always enjoy seeing those different um, interpretations. Also, mm. Twilight's wings. My goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're fantastic. Yeah, I like the I like the way that the inner feathers and the outer feathers are kind of different. Mm -hmm. I, I actually didn't stare at Twilight's rainbow power wings for too long. Did they come out like that, or is that an interpretation? Uh, I think uh, that uh, I don't know. I think I don't it's know. Googling Twilight Sparkle <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> Power. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just the rainbow going over them making that interpretation. Yeah. No, her wings were a different color. Oh yeah, it was like a darker purple. Yeah, and well, stuff it like definitely that. Yeah, wasn't like rainbow, a, but yeah. darker purple it was on purple, the tips. It went purple and then like a like a vibrant pink like in mm -hmm. her mane, and then dark purple in her mane. Yeah, so it matched her mane colors. Okay. So. Yeah. Anyways, anyway, um, all right. That little design on her wings too. I just I just kind of noticed that it's yeah. like an Art Nouveau esque design because her wings start out feathers towards the tip, and then her feathers kind of extend into this hmm. art. That yeah, that's an art nouveau it turns design. Into like a symbol. That kind yeah. of in that like on the whatever part of her wing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is pretty cool. The shanks. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, we do have one final surprise piece that we oh, wanted to bring we've up. Oh, got a surprise. Because we have a very special guest on called Rain Gear who makes fantastic oh, no. art, and this is a piece by him. Love of Twilight. It's Rain Gear's art piece. <laughs> so Rain Gear's been doing this thing that he thinks he's been totally subtle about, but we've totally caught on. So we announced the main six uh, episodes probably about six weeks ago when we were figuring that all out, and we gave a specific order for them. And we think that you have totally been like making them as the weeks have gone on, <laughs> because there was a period there where you made like four in a row, and it matched the week that we were doing <laughs> the episode in. I think you had a you had a Fluttershy yeah. piece and then a Rainbow Dash piece and then there was there was like one more and mm. we were just looking at it and we were going hmm <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I he's been it, following along yeah it kind of subtly inspired me I guess because I was like you know I haven't mm. even drawn Rainbow Dash yet <laughs> I have to do that yeah well, well you know I I know that this was this was um definitely in serious contention for, for yeah. this episode we wanted to keep it as an extra because you were coming on so we could talk with you a little bit quickly but it was uh, it was it was fantastic in its own right mm -hmm. um and, and i loved there's there's a lot of things that i love about this piece and and uh 
and uh so just just awesome job in general awesome job can i can i just say that i love the lighting emanating from the tree because mm -hmm. it's very directional in certain places and very atmospheric in other places and ah it's just yeah so glorious yeah. Yeah. God, you spoil me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you really, you really, really enjoy vibrant, interesting colors and how they interact with each other. And I have to say thank you because I think a lot of times people try to be too safe with that stuff, and you've and you've gone the complete opposite direction. Sometimes it doesn't always work, you know. But <laughs> oh. but in this piece, it comes together really nicely. Mm. Yeah, I just love the color, like the crazy vibrant colors you've got going on, like emanating from that tree. With the, I, the, the, I think I. <laughs> Go on, that was <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, just like the, the fire dripping down from the tree. It's not fire, but it looks like fire. There's tr leaves and stuff going on. There's like the bright cyans. You've got the bright greens, and it's just, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think this is your finest work. I, I have to say, your your Fluttershy piece recently really grabbed me as well. Um, yeah. I don't but, know that. Uh, uh, but uh, one thing you made of me was pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. There was there was a couple I think that maybe had my OC in it. I can't really remember. But... All right, all right. Enough yeah. to for attention, <laughs> folks. We just wanted to bring this one up because we thought that people should know about it. And then you came on so we could make you a little embarrassed and move. It's adorable. Mm -hmm. um, there are so cool question. there are so many really really good things about this piece too. That like mm -hmm. ah, I could gush about it for hours and hours. Like mm -hmm. uh, the the little flower that's on that mound is a very very <laughs> vibrant pink and it's, it's just so eye catching. And, and the petals in the foreground. Yeah. Yeah, Blur. and then the water is just oh my god. Ah. I like this. I like the cyan in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a real separation like between the layers. It's uh... also Twilight oh, it's super good. adorable. Yeah, it's true. Because I remember we gave your rarity a hard time in our crab episode, <laughs> but yeah. like this Twilight is mm, top notch. Yeah, mm. I mean, I spent way too long in this though. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. Shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Only dreams. No, this is this is fantastic and, and and you should you should spend apparently this much time on everything if it comes out as good as this. I'm not sure if that was an insult or a compliment, but I tried to turn it into a compliment at some point. It just <laughs> fell along the way. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Fantastic cool. job. And uh we should probably move on to the questions. But luckily, the questions this week are just pretty fast. Is that right, Atmospark? That's pretty right. Okay, do I have to read this with a southern accent? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, I got one question here. Is what type of folks were y'all in high school? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Set in by Blue Moon I... 1996. That was an Australian I'm, Western accent. I'm so Fantastic. sorry, Blue Moon 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Should I sorry. translate? <laughs> Uh, sure. <laughs> what type of folks were y'all in high school? They actually said y'all in the question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You. By all. the way, Blue Moon, amazing beer. <laughs> no, no, shh, it's 1996. Okay. Yeah. It's not. It's nothing to do with beer. Oh. Oh. It's not legal. Legal drinking age yet. <laughs> <laughs> not even in my country. Hmm. So, um, we're gonna start this off with rain gear. Uh, we're gonna put you on the spot. Because once again, our guests didn't come up with a question, so I'm going to blame you for that and uh, immediately put you on the spot. So, what, what were you like in high school? Are you still in high school? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only just left high school about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I don't know if I've had time to properly evaluate what class I'd be in, but if I was anything, probably... Probably nerds, more, yeah. mm -hmm. I think. Were you like shy, artsy kind of? Yeah, I'd bring my sketchbook to school. I'd sit down by a tree and just sketch stuff mm -hmm. that came around me. Yeah, it's on the field. Yeah, that's cool. well. It, it, I I think your point about not being far enough away from high school is a really good point. I I'm three years removed now, so but I I'm only kind of feeling that I can really grasp that because it's 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 kind of a transition from high school you to rest of your life you. <laughs> um, yeah. that's a really good point to bring up actually. Uh, I guess we'll go in, in chronological order then, because I guess I'm the second youngest here. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for being younger than me, because I'm always the youngest. <laughs> um, so so in high school, um, I I like to describe myself as a geek. Um, I feel like nerds is like very deep level into things. And I've, I've never been, you know, I've never been the kind of guy to do a lot of like D&D &D or things like that, even though I've really wanted to try. But I, I don't know, I kind of floated around 
a lot of different groups in high school. High school was not a very nice time for me, <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of it was floating around between a lot of different groups. But I guess the the one I kind of settled into at the end was was the kind of programming geeks talking about computers and programming. <laughs> and I've always been into video games, so that's been a constant too. Hmm. All right, so Burn. Who's next? next? Yeah, Burn's uh, next. Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, I was stretching. Um, mm -hmm. I went from like. This is high school. Okay, so doesn't matter. <laughs> so high school, freshman year. Uh, uh oh god. <laughs> I guess I was like a really introverted punk at one point. As weird as that sounds, because <laughs> I was like I was you always used to wear like metal shirts and stuff, and like, I had shorter hair, and but I was always super shy. Um, but I was always a big nerd because I was like, uh, what is it? I don't know. The computers and games and stuff and then eventually i went into like full recession uh nerd mode and like wore always wore hats all the time and like just hung out with my friend and that's about it and then i started becoming like a skater kid and I'd, like go skate with my friends and like grew my hair out and then from there i just didn't <laughs> even give a crap anymore like when it was like junior and sophomore years like i don't even crap i had like super long hair i just did did what i wanted in games and yeah uh, <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't a <laughs> wasn't a goth, wasn't a jock, wasn't a cool kid. I was everything else. Burned, burned was just chillaxed. Like he's not the kind of bro that's like, bro, bro, we should go to party, bro. But he was like, he was like, bro, yeah, <laughs> bro. I was Sick. always the chill guy. I never had any Sick enemies, flips, bro. <laughs> like no one like hated me or picked on me. But yeah, that's yeah. so well, fetch. They, that's that. Uh, that's it's funny that you mentioned you're a skater got you were skating guy at some point because like that totally resonates with me like if i were to imagine like that's the thing i immediately picked out to be like i think the most likely one is this one <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was your long hair maybe that was it the mm -hmm. long hair I used to wear bandanas a lot like during my skater phase because i had long <laughs> hair and the bandanas kept the hair out of my face while i was skating that's why i started to wear them then it became a fashion statement and i didn't skate anymore what was your so, best like, trick did, was my it... best trick uh -huh. My could you best... ollie because i could never ollie no i never even got that far <laughs> my best trick was i could go really fast down a hill and not eat junk and die because <laughs> one of cool. my friend's best trick was uh breaking his collarbone yeah so like i i can run the board really like fine go fast and i used it to get around because like i didn't have a car in high school so it's like that's yeah. how i got to my friend's place and stuff yeah. was skating i was like who cares about tricks? <laughs> For sure. So, did you leave the skater boy? Uh, um, he said, "See you later, boy." Yeah, I said, "See you." <laughs> I, I said, "See you later, boy," to that community a long time ago. Yeah, because yes. it was it because bandanas became in style again, and uh, no, he wasn't good enough for her. It's oh. my hair became long enough to where I could tie it back, so I didn't need bandanas uh, anymore. So okay. then I kind of just said goodbye to that <laughs> i'm sorry no i'm too amused by the fact that i fit avril lavigne references from like 2003 in here no no that's no, stupid okay all right so anyways we're getting up on time so uh, yeah. at my spark why don't you tell us a little bit about your high school experience it was what like nine ten years ago yeah something like that i'll let you uh i'll let everyone else decide that um i could, I could, I could be 80 for all you know uh, i was sort of like a sort of a mix between everything um i didn't really have a thing like there wasn't at my high school there wasn't really the clicks like you see in like american movies or even american high school but because i didn't go to high school in america i don't know what that's really like um there wasn't <laughs> there's, not, there's not really the clicks like that because we had school uniforms so you can't like go sit with people that you dress with like that you dress like because mm, there isn't such a thing um you had school uniforms yeah wow. every every school here has school uniforms hmm. wow I, know um, I learned something new today uh -huh. learned something new okay well yeah no every school in australia <laughs> new zealand has i think primary school in new zealand doesn't have uniforms but every school in australia has school it's uniforms like always <laughs> hmm. um yeah. so yeah like there isn't really that sort of clickiness because you can't sort of personalize what you're dressing as so we were like my like I mean there's personalities and stuff that you that you associate with my my sort of group, if you will, was like we just attracted the people who didn't really fit in everywhere else. Okay. Hmm. So we were like a yeah. mix of the nerds, geeks, the the weird ones. That was us. <laughs> cool. 
Cool. We like to throw things at each other a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Mr. Flutter Guy, the grandpa of the podcast. Oh, uh, I feel so <laughs> old. <laughs> by, like, by like three months. Yeah. Five bucks says he was a nerd. Uh, I was a geek. Damn um, <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I was a geek on multiple levels, actually. <laughs> Because uh, I was on a, the high school's first robotics team. Uh, and then you led it. And then I was the captain of the first robotics team. <laughs> yeah. That's and actually then, uh, really cool. And oh, then okay. uh, we won the second most prestigious award in the nation uh, while I was captain of the robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but weren't you also on, like, the crew team, though? I was also on the crew team, so I did sports, and we See, won. See, that doesn't count. You can't be a nerd if you're on the crew team. See, we... I was I was yeah. unathletic and <laughs> geeky. Yeah. That's, like, the true geek. You're, you're like, you're, like... And to be fair, you were also like more geeky than me nowadays, though. So. Yeah, well, I played D and D in high school and robotics and computers and programming and stuff like that. But I also did crew and was in the band, so I was a band geek as well, and that continued throughout college too. So, yeah, yeah, he's he, it's kind of ridiculous how much you did in high school. Compared I know to, <laughs> the, the, the three of the three of us were just kind of like drifting around, being like, "Wow, this time kind of sucks," and you were like, "I'm gonna do." <laughs> everything <laughs> I, I, hated I, I hated high school i failed that stuff so hard i was, I was in a robotics yeah. team I, I did robotics yeah. yeah yeah cool i barely got my diploma we had like the, yeah, I, I, no. um the really high-end uh, nigga mindstorms kits oh they, yeah, yeah. They, were, they were like i think they had 50 yeah. or 60 sets worth of stuff and um they is, had like yeah. challenges and stuff <laughs> set and it was great nice all right well yeah i think i think uh Burned and I are kind of in the same camp. High school sucked, but we got past it. <laughs> Although the difference is burned that my marks were okay. Uh, and yours, <laughs> yeah. uh, God, uh, I failed so many classes. But but yeah, but I I'm I'm glad I'm past high school. High school, like it, it wasn't bad at the time. It's just you know looking back on it now and like seeing where I am in my life right now, it's just like wow, that time sucked. <laughs> I just high school was it. bunk. I was also like I was also this this kid who was like tiny. I was. When I went into grade nine, I was like four feet tall, this like baby faced, blonde haired kid. <laughs> so my first year kind of like made me grow this hardened shell because everywhere I would go, people would be like, oh, look at him. Is he even in high school? Huh? The... I'm whispering behind your back, but you can totally hear me. Um, so I <laughs> no one blonde girl everyone hates. <laughs> so, so, so um, I, I kind of like formed this like hardened shell and I didn't break out of that shell into like even like even talking about this podcast i didn't break out of this shell until about like sometime last year mm. uh because it was like so ingrained in me in high school so i'm glad i'm past it because it kind of brought out a side of me that i don't really like and now i'm past that so yeah mm -hmm. yay so right. anyways so we are running short on time <laughs> um, nah, i'm editing this week whatever Who cares? Eh, you know um yeah. plugs rain plugs. gear would you like would you like to do our plugs do but they you... but oh, they yeah okay can, can can you do our plugs <laughs> like we're the asking plugs? the guests to do the plugs now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can remember them all. Uh, Try. Don't worry. Yeah. If you can't do it, I will okay. suddenly remind you. <laughs> He'll poke you with a stick. There is a Tumblr now. <laughs> there is <laughs> going to be a Tumblr. Be. <laughs> not now. Not yes, now. there is. Go see it. It's a picture of my face. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> there is a... There is a Deviant Arts okay. uh, Cutiac Crusaders. Okay, yeah. There is a Twitter at Cutiac Crusade. Yeah. Uh, a YouTube. No, nope, uh, that's out. We're, we're, well, no longer, we're no longer shouting that out oh, on the plugs. Yeah. There, there is, is still a YouTube, a YouTube though. He can there's, eat there's, it. <laughs> I, there's, there's still YouTube, a YouTube, but we've had arguments about whether or not we're going to keep talking about that on the... Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next. <laughs> um, Next. There's two more. There's two more. You're missing two. There's Gmail. Okay. Uh, Cutiac Crusaders. At mm -hmm. gmail.com. Yep. At gmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. And there's one more. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Now, I'm going to give you a hint, and, and the hint is going to be Fache. <laughs> the other hint is going to be Book Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Fache, Book Horse. You have the My stupid rainbow back. plasmin word for face, and then a horse who likes books. 
face and books put it together <laughs> it's facebook guys i don't even know maybe we're on facebook you didn't add something into facebook <laughs> no facebook we uh, literally uh, added an we s <laughs> we have a uh, we have a facebook which is facebook. yeah facebook.com slash cutie art crusaders yeah, mm. yeah. All right, there you go so, uh, they'll all be on the screen Luck luckily for all of us it'll be on the screen so <laughs> yes. i feel like is this cruel <laughs> oh, no it's yeah. fun it's great yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. Well, that is everything for this week. As as we were mentioning before, you've got the spoiler cast right after this for the finale. So make sure to stay tuned after that. That should be super exciting because that episode was so awesome. <laughs> um, Yay. And uh, next week will be our final uh, episode in the main six countdown to episode 100. Uh, episode 99, Rarity. So look forward to that. The final one of our main six countdown should be exciting times so look forward to that and that's everything for this week guys right anything mm-hmm. else send in your episode 100 stuff see if you can guess who the guest next week will be <laughs> yeah Ooh. uh all right well that is everything for this week thank you guys for watching whether or not you're on the live stream or on youtube we appreciate your support and burned i know you're mouthing this along as i say it so i said that specifically <laughs> to screw you up <laughs> well actually I was thinking about where I could interject into a moment and ask, did we give Rain Gear a chance to plug himself in his DeviantArt? We that is not. a perfect point. Yeah. I completely forgot about that, but he should absolutely do that. Okay. Well, I guess, yes, I have a DeviantArt. It's just the uh, Rain Gear. Mm-hmm. With a dash or no dash? With a dash. With uh, the... Yes, with so a dash. So rain, rain, rain dash gear. Gear. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can't is that, do my own plugs. Is that, yeah, the, like, is that the only place, or Tumblr, do you have like a Tumblr, Twitter, uh, uh, MySpace? No, I only have DeviantArt. <laughs> I like it. It's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. <laughs> Speaking you, of which... I know you stream now and then, right? Uh, yes, I do stream every so often. Uh, uh, I can't do my own plugs, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you can find that on your DeviantArt, though. You make journals yes. and stuff about I, it. I post regularly, but when I stream and when I don't. Mm. So, okay. so yeah, cool. go, go to his DeviantArt and everything else, I guess, you'll post every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I, I usually find that with artists the deviant arts are kind of like a hub for everything else, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. what we do on ours too. Uh yeah. So thank you for coming on. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was it was yeah, a lot of fun having... having you on. So so thank you so much for coming on. Thanks uh, for making yeah. art of me. <laughs> so... Yes, and thank you for making art of all of us uh, and representing the entire uh, fan artist community. If anybody has any issues with uh, the way that the <laughs> community was represented, please take it to Rain Gear and... Uh, <laughs> Is Deviant Art? The blame has been shifted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I know I know you were you were a bit shy about it, but but you brought up some really good points, so thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Hmm. All right. So thank you well, all that's... for watching. That's everything uh, this week. On live stream I'm, on YouTube. I'm, we love you all I'm, the same. <laughs> I'm Rainbow Plasma. <laughs> I'm Bundle One. <laughs> I'm uh, Atma Spark. And I'm Fluttergrey317. Uh, I'm going to go and kill my podcast co hosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. All right, See you guys next week. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> no we got to do this again. again. <laughs> We're doing this again. We're doing this again. Do it all over again. That's mm-hmm. fine. I don't care. My <laughs> name. Is Rainbow Plasma. I'm Bird No One. I'm Flutter Guy 317. Admiral Spark. I'm Ringy. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll see you guys, guys next, next week. week. Bye. Peace. Bye. Love you all the same. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hello and welcome to the 24th and final spoiler cast done by the Kitty Art Crusaders for Season 4 of My Little Pony. My name is FlutterGuy317 and today I am joined by Rainbow Plasma. Hello. Burned01. Yo. And Atmospark. Hi, I'm always lost. Aww. If you want to be first <laughs> next time, I can make you first. <laughs> yeah, first the next spoiler cast. Deal. All Deal. of Season 5, you're going to be first. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you're never going to remember that. No, I won't. <laughs> remind me. <laughs> Uh, so today we're going to be spoiler casting season four, episodes twenty-five and twenty-six, the season finale, Twilight's Kingdom, parts one and two. See, Whew. it's kingdom, Man. not empire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's an old joke. 
That's that's uh, from, uh, oh, that's from wow, the that's a beginning of season three. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, jeez. Uh, Finale. Man, this was like ah, so good. Um, so Rainbow Plasma had this idea that we're gonna go through season four next week, like a just a recap of season four. So, um, I'm not gonna we're not gonna talk about like what led up to the season finale, but we are gonna talk about the finale itself. Right. Right. So. Basically, it opens, uh, Twilight has been summoned to Canterlot, and she just has to smile and wave at dignitaries, and she feels, like, kind of useless. Welcome to the real world, Twilight! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like she's been given this princess hood, and, uh, nothing's really become of it. Like, people have noticed that she's a princess throughout the season four, uh, but, like, she hasn't really taken on any new roles. She's no longer a student of Princess Celestia, so like, she doesn't really have anything to do. Yeah. Besides like saving things. She could smile and wave pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm at first, I didn't really understand what she was going on. Like, I understood what she was going on about, but it seemed like a kind of character flip because throughout a lot of season four, she was like, "Oh no, don't treat me like a princess." But the more I thought about it, the more it does make sense in her yeah. mind. She's like, "No, no, no, don't treat me like a princess." Unless, and I, that's you know, unless she's doing her duties. But it's like, you know, she's getting all this attention and then she's going off and really doing nothing. She's like, look, if I'm going to get this attention, you know, I feel this pressure to do something, you know? So mm -hmm. it, at first, I wasn't on board with her kind of attitude with it. But the more I thought about it, it really does make sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of like she was writing letters to Celestia and she was Celestia's student and whatnot and now she has this new title that she's like kind of an equal to the rest of the princesses but she doesn't really have a role yet she's not like a princess of anything she's just a princess and yeah yeah and I mean she's always <laughs> she's always been a doer so I mean mm -hmm. like uh, sitting around and doing nothing has probably not been great for her um, yeah evidently so then we get this fantastic song. Dudes, dudes, <laughs> let me just take over this entire spoiler cast by talking about that song. It was good. It's really, yeah. it was really, really good. Uh, mm. any, anyone who knows me knows that I, I have a weakness for a certain uh, pink cotton candy uh, pony. Um, <laughs> and uh, her voice especially is, ooh, ooh, so good. And then her singing mm -hmm. voice, ooh, so good. Um, <laughs> very, very good. Um but uh, this song in general just like kind of combined that um, with a couple of other, you know, great singers. Everyone, everyone singing on the show is a great singer. And then, you know, in terms of music, what really, what really uh, kind of is my weakness is really good harmonies. Mm -hmm. And so the chorus was just three plus probably more in the background, but, but generally three fantastic female singers um harmonizing together for the chorus and it was just like wow and the backing <laughs> music it, it was it's one of my favorite songs and i listen back to it and upon second listening it's so short and i don't realize i didn't realize how short it was at first but mm -hmm. i'm really disappointed because it's only like a minute or so long uh, yeah. i guess longer if you count the whole twilight part yeah, um, it was interesting how they did that. They like kind of led Twilight's part into this whole three-part harmony, uh, and it, it the mood changed of the song. I don't, I I haven't gone back through it to to listen to like key changes or anything like that. But I'm I'm betting that knowing Daniel Ingram, there's probably a key change in there somewhere to shift between like the sad part and the happy part of the song. Oh yeah, so. like a shift from a minor key to to a major key. Uh, yeah. for sure um yeah it's 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 kind of you know it's it's almost like you have to do that for that kind of situation um, yeah because it's it matches the mood so well but yeah it was it was uh it was really good song i lo i loved it and and it uh really it brought together two things i really like which is cadence's voice and, and her singing voice mm -hmm. and and that harmonizing so yeah major props the last song <laughs> we'll get to it later the last song eh it was okay uh but yeah, this one was was really was really good and it kind of it was like the 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 only big song in the yeah. in the episode compared to last season where it was like a billion mm -hmm. of them so uh we're gonna move on now because we've been gushing about this song for Fine. the past like three minutes sorry uh to the introduction of Tyrick the villain oh my god what an introduction it was so well done <laughs> yeah what did you guys think of the villain in general 
Well, interesting enough, I don't know how many people know this, because I definitely didn't until Silo pointed it out to me. T-Rex is actually the first villain of My Little Pony, like, ever. He, yep. the, the events that T-Rex caused in the movie led to Generation 1. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And he had <laughs> yeah. his... He looks very, very similar in G4 as it did in G1, but his powers were different. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. In Generation... So they, kind of, they kind of used him to, to kind of give a shout-out to... to previous yeah. generations. His, um, yeah. his power in Generation 1 was he had access to the Rainbow of Darkness and was going to bring Eternal Night. And then uh-huh. the ponies had the Rainbow of Light and then defeated him. So I guess I guess they kind of split that into yeah. Nightmare Moon with the Night and, mm-hmm. and and his character, which then... Oh, interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. It's, a bit of, it's a bit of history for you. Yeah, I've, I haven't yeah. seen anywhere, anyone bring that up anywhere, so I thought I'd bring it up now. Cool. I saw it on Reddit, actually. Um... There was like everything on Reddit. Yeah, I know. (laughs) There were a couple posts, and it was like, uh, you know, screenshots from the the first episode, or the first episode of Gen 1 and this episode. Okay, because I I didn't see that on Reddit. Yeah, it's interesting, because they did, like, his character design is very similar. Mm -hmm. It's like, obviously in the style of of Gen 4 now, but like, the fact that he's a monkey tar, or whatever you want to... Whatever that's supposed to be. (laughs) Yeah, um... Yeah, it's it's interesting that they had that throwback. But yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I loved I loved just the introduction of Tyrek. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that was my favorite part is when they actually introduced him, because um, I I always enjoy when the show does something a little darker than you expect for a kid show, and like him like kind of had creepy alleyway, some guy like you know horror tropes and stuff, and just sucks his soul out essentially. It was mm-hmm. I don't know it was it was pretty cool to see, and it was done really well too. Yeah. Is he friend or is he foe? Yeah, <laughs> that was the um, yeah. that was the other thing. He that's another thing that's a throwback to the original character. He was the darkest villain oh, in really? the early generations. Oh. You, was that a quote too that he said? You think? Do you know that? Not sure. <laughs> uh, mm, darn. We'll have Maybe. to go back and watch. Maybe we should spoiler cast Gen One. <laughs> no, uh, no. Um, so basically, uh, that introduction leads to Celestia and Luna. Realizing that they've just had a vision that T Rex is back, and so they, surprise, surprise, call for Twilight, um, and kind of explain the situation to her. And then they, and then they immediately go, eh, never mind. And then yeah. they call Discord. <laughs> yeah. The uh, only one princess can save us now, Discord, Princess Discord. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, was... so yeah, he 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 played quite the role in this episode. Something I've something I've realized recently. Um, about the show when it was uh, the first couple of seasons people and people are still clamoring for this but people are always clamoring for villains to come back you know we, we want to see more Nightmare Moon we want to we want to see more Chrysalis we want to see more vill- you know villains in general they want them to come back hmm. um, what I've realized is that you know this show isn't really that type of show it's not really a consistent villain type of show there was a there was a art piece that I saw on DeviantArt that really kind of brought it together for me uh, seeing how many villains there were, they had like all villains on like a couch and they were watching some sort of movie or something. <laughs> and it was all the villains from season one to season four, um, just all crowded together. And it was amazing to me, like, I, cause I had forgotten how many there were. And I realized mm. that the show is more about this plethora of, of, of colorful characters, um, that, that are strewn around for villains as opposed to one or the other. That being said, discord is like the only major villain that's had this reoccurring role. Um, this significant yeah. reoccurring role. So he's definitely the exception there. But I kind of realized that the other ones don't have it for a reason because that's just not the show's style. Mm-hmm. Well, they did bring Trixie back um, for yeah, that one episode. Yeah, but that's, that's but kind that's of like a different. antagonist more so. I mean, yes, you yeah. consider her a villain, but she, but it's more of an antagonist, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I, they're a little bit more lenient with the antagonists, but at the same time, a lot of them haven't come back either. So Yeah. Well, it is interesting because uh, last season we saw Trixie come back, and this season um, we did see. Oh wait, was it this season or last season where we saw the return of Nightmare Moon in a flashback? Um, it was this season's uh, opener. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this season's opener. Um, and Discord. Which, yeah, which was interesting, and then Discord came back. So, I don't know. Um, I can't see Tyrek ever coming back, but. <laughs> well, yeah, well, he's yeah, I, I stuck agree. Now. Yeah, well, unless I, I unless agree. Cerberus leaves his post again. <laughs> yeah. So um, so yeah, Discord is like the only one that comes back, but 
they've obviously decided with him that he will be the exception to that rule because mm-hmm. they want him to start playing like a bigger role. And he played a, you know, a, a huge role. He was probably mm-hmm. second or third uh, most important character in this in this episode. Yeah. Well, can we talk about that fact? Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Sorry, you sounded like you were going to say something that interrupted you. Oh well, I was just gonna say that he uh, he brought up the book with the and the the whole chest thing. And... Yeah, we'll get to that. Burn. Yeah. What were you gonna talk about? I was gonna say, can we just talk about how awesome like Discord was throughout this entire episode? Because I remember, like, yeah. kind of all of us unanimously were a little upset with how they treated him in the Fluttershy episode and stuff, the whole reformation kind of thing. I don't know how we all like thought about that episode, but I remember I was kind of upset over the episode. I was I like, think, Man, I think you were a little bit more so yeah, than, yeah. than others. I wanted there to be more. I what like I really liked the character. I liked everything about it, but I wanted there to be more than just this one little piece episode. And all of a sudden, you know, Discord flips a switch. Ugh. But like in this episode, <laughs> I felt like he played every part and role that I would want him to play, mm-hmm. and I felt like they portrayed it like really well and really awesomely and like him learning his lesson so to speak this time was actually like treated you know more seriously on an, and more, on an epic yeah. scale in which i appreciate it if that makes sense it, yeah. it, was, it was a much kind of better that he deserves it was a much yeah. better episode for discord in that respect yeah i think it yeah. was kind of it was kind of like a uh a, a redo in in a way just because it, it he did kind of reset there have been theories that he actually never turned but let's not get into that <laughs> We're not uh, here to discuss uh, theories, yeah. but um, but yeah, I I I agree. You know, I wasn't quite as adamant as as you were burned uh, when that other episode came out. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, but I definitely do agree that looking back now, this this was a much better representation, and, and should pave the way for legitimate friend discord. Uh, if yep. the main six will get off his back, jeez, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of jerks. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I I agree. This was this was a great episode for discord. Um, I thought it was, it, it, I think the the problem is that Discord sometimes, because they're not long episodes, you know, when Discord's involved, he kind of plays one role and there's not a huge amount of depth. You know, it's like, it's like a lot of other characters that aren't the focus. They kind of mm-hmm. just play their role, you know, but he, this one, he really got a focus. And so it showed him in his chaos mode when he was, when he loves talking back and forth and being really vague and, and, and playing, playing with the, uh, with the main six and, and fooling around with them. Right. But, you know, when you get down to it, there was a little bit deeper there, you know, a little bit more of his serious side and a little bit more of his thoughtful side. And, and there was just, you know, a lot more to it. So I thought they finally gave him his kind of, his kind of do, uh, whatever you call it. Yeah. He, he was G for one of these sort of episodes. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. There was a little bit there in the the season opener, um, but this was definitely this was mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I feel like in that the Fluttershy episode where he did get reformed, um, that the plot was kind of rushed yeah. at the end. Yeah, um, it didn't really I feel, feel that, real. Yeah, I feel that this was just generally more genuine, and uh, I don't know. I I enjoyed the pacing a bit more as far as. Yep. Discord's turning and, and stuff like that. I think the entire, I think the pacing of this entire episode is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, episodes. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. It's one episode. Like, yeah. It, it it is. It's one episode. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like I you can name it different <laughs> things, but it is. Yeah. Um. Uh. So yeah. So Discord basically is the one who brings up the whole box that has been sitting since the opener and mm-hmm. hasn't really been talked about or touched or whatever. Uh, but we have seen the keys throughout, right. all except for Twilight's key. Right. And so he brings up their journal, and he has marked out pages where each of the ponies has received their key. And so they kind of uh, go to visit the box, and they uh, Pinkie Pie throws Boneless at the box, and he transforms into the key. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, and then they all kind of get their keys like transformed and stuff like that, except for Twilight, who obviously doesn't have her key yet. So. So, are we going to do the whole Rainbow Plasma was right thing now or <laughs> later? But you were. We can do it. We can do it now. I absolutely was. You right. were right about the five, but not about the sixth. I was yeah. absolutely right about the sixth. No, you weren't. I said. You said the diary. I said. What? You said the diary was the key. No, no, no. The general statement 
I, I didn't say it was guaranteed it was the diary. My general statement was they were going to have the five keys, and then the sixth key was going to come either like right before the final episode or the final episode during the climactic end when the the world gets saved because she figured out her final key, and then it opens and it's the and it's the solution. Mm -hmm. I totally freaking called it as well as the fact that i mean we've all known it for for like months now but like this kind of confirmed those items were the keys uh called yeah. that from the beginning too so uh i was right i was totally right and <laughs> i know what you're trying to say i spark but my main theories about this entire series this entire season rather uh was totally right and i will gloat in it because i'm never right about predictions because i suck at them <laughs> so let me gloat because woo, I'm awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, um. So yeah. So Twilight kind of gets depressed again because she doesn't have a key. Um. But it's an interesting way of putting it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, she does not really depressed, but like kind of let down a little bit. Um. But and then, uh, basically, Discord. Discord turns, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Discord turns, and then uh, Celestia and Luna realize that he's turned. And so they come up with this plan to basically get rid of their magic. And that's where the first part of the finale ends. Um, and the the beginning of the second part begins. Right. Um, the second part is a little bit less on plot and a little bit more on action. Yeah. So action-y. <laughs> so uh, instead of just like getting rid of their magic, because for some reason they can't do that, um, they decide to give Twilight all of their alicorn magic. And so she agrees and she becomes like the super powerful, like quadruple alicorn <laughs> princess of everything. Thing. Yeah. Super yeah. Saiyan, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to the Dragon Ball Z references. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah. And then, and then, uh, uh, you know, Tyrek and discord are, are getting more powerful and then they, they have kind of, uh, gotten to the three alicorns mm -hmm. and that's when they figure out whoops yeah <laughs> we've forgotten one and they've given all of their powers to twilight which sends sets up this epic final battle which mm -hmm. is just like what show are we watching like seriously yeah. it, was, it was crazy yeah that uh... when, when they were fighting he already sucked discord's power away right yep yeah yeah. So what was kind of interesting was when they were fighting, it was like we're they reached that point where like we're evenly matched. So it was interesting what I was thinking about when I was watching the episode is that he's basically stolen all of the pony magic in Equestria and Discord's magic, and now he's evenly matched with four wow. alicorns worth of magic. Yeah. Ooh, Which magic scales, power, power levels, levels, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because, and it, I thought that it was really cool the way they represented Discord's magic, like with all the chaotic like blue and oh stuff yeah like you could hear like yeah. all the crazy stuff in the background like bells whistles yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i think i think in terms of the power levels it would make sense to me that um you've got four alicorns on the one side and on the other side you have discord plus the three pony races it would make sense to me that each pony race together combined would equal one alicorn and then discord is like a another alicorn mm -hmm. um it's it's interesting to think about of course it's none of that lines up perfectly and none of it's canon so i don't really give a crap but it, yeah it, it did kind <laughs> yeah. of match up in an interesting way 4v4 kind of thing mm -hmm. um, yeah um so the fight was really really epic and uh lots of lasers and, and seriously stuff. like what show are you watching <laughs> i would i've never my suspension of di uh, disbelief is huge right mm -hmm. so like i i can i can throw away a lot of random details as long as I'm enjoying a show and, and and so a lot of stuff doesn't really affect me but this was the first time that I, I was halfway through the show and they were doing this battle and I, and I just thought it didn't affect me at all but I just thought this is happening in yeah. MLP yeah. like yeah. how did we get here like how did, <laughs> how did this end up happening I loved it of course but yeah. it was just one of those moments where it was just like whoa oh. <laughs> this is happening what's going I on here I had that same moment when during the wedding episode when uh what is it Cadence sucks Twilight in that like that fiery ball right like, oh, essentially yeah, yeah. down into the, the crystal pit. prison or down to hell if you will. Mm. I had that same exact moment. I was like, what the heck are we watching? <laughs> I just there was this giant fight scene. They were punching things, 
and lasers and now twilight gets sucked down to hell like this is great face but lasers. what am i watching <laughs> all sorts yeah. of face lasers yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i heard a really good theory about that and that's it's kind of the the harry potter syndrome where um the audience grows up with the story so it naturally gets darker and darker slash you know uh i don't really know more mature and more mature because when you think about it you know let's say the the show was targeted at like you know five six-year-old girls or let's say five to ten right let's, mm-hmm. let's do a range five to ten right when it first started it's been four, four years, years you yeah. know like it's it's been four years so that age range is now you know nine to 14 mm-hmm. and of course yes they still want to appeal to younger and they want everyone to be able to jump in but you can see over the years the shift older and older and older that kind of matches their audience if not mm-hmm. a bit accelerated by uh some more audience me- audience members that they might not have expected at first. <laughs> um, <laughs> Unsuspected age groups. Yeah, yeah. who us? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. But it it was it was really cool to see. I don't think it was, I don't think it was so over the top that like you couldn't get like a kid to watch it. And I think, you know, I, this is this is really. I, I don't know how to describe it, but but this is kind of the natural progression of it as as you get older and older and and it wasn't too over the top that was like whoa this is like mature Mm -hmm. but it was just like this is a step forward um into making this show something serious and not just slice of life i mean we all love slice of life but there was definitely some some progression made here in terms of the uh audience i don't know (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. and i know exactly what you're saying we really have to appreciate what they're doing like trying to make it more mature and like uh what is it just all the people behind making this cartoon trying to take that step like up to make it more i don't know and i guess intense if you will there was actually a tweet i think by was it amy keeming rogers Mm -hmm. where it was in her notes received by hasbro where she in her script that she um like story that she uh showed them or whatever her test script or whatnot uh hasbro was like no, Amy, you cannot have Twilight punch Tyrick in the face. <laughs> uh, like, that was one of the notes they sent back. So instead, she had to shoot him with a big laser in the face or whatever right. she did. I forget. Yeah. I like I like <laughs> the lasers personally. I, I, uh, it, it's, I, I'm not one to, to, to hold up, like, ultra violence or whatever, uh, to, because, I don't know, I mean, there's kid stuff, right? You yeah. Know, kids watching. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that with the lasers, it's so out there. It's like lightsabers, you know. Like yep. it's yeah. not. It's almost not real, but it's it's still exciting. Yeah. Well, there was a very real moment for all of us, uh, which was at the very start of the fight scene, when the library gets destroyed. Dudes, uh, I didn't. That didn't hit me until like a day feels... later. Uh, yeah. But like that. That is like the most consistent location in the show. Mm-hmm. That has been through everything. And now it's a castle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's that's crazy that that, that, no. that is gone. At the time, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. But then yeah. I moved on for it because it was they were still fighting. Yeah. But like yeah. a day later, I was just like, whoa, that's actually yeah. like gone. Like everything <laughs> everything happened in that, that yeah, tree. Yeah, everything like... happened in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you know, that scene really hit me, like seeing it in rubble and seeing it in flames. Like, and, it, and the mood of the scene changed too. I believe right around that scene, like the color of things happening changed. So when the library is on fire, things instantly became darker and like a dull red. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seriously changed the tone for everything that was going on. Yeah. Well, that's when Twilight really like kind of stepped up because she just... Yeah, and started fighting because she was running and then that happened. She started fighting, I think, yeah. if I remember. Yeah. She did save Aloysius though, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of us are happy about that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's so like it hits so close to home uh-huh. when uh, something like that happens, and uh, I don't know. It's like like you said, Rainbow Plasma. That's been one of the most consistent locations throughout the entire oh, it's been show the, so far. So. It, it's the the most consistent location. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Besides the general term of Ponyville, but that's not really a visual location that you see all of. You know, like this yeah. is the this is definitely the biggest one. It'll be interesting to see how it shifts next season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, now she's got her own castle. Yeah, yeah. You it'll know, just but... it'll just be interesting to see how they kind of make a new home base, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Before Let we even... go to the huge, huge castle and home base, the the in the did you want to say something, Pinky Dash? I'm just saying, not even Luna has a castle. 
<laughs> oh, that's, yeah. Well, yeah, that's she true. shares a castle. She's been gone for like a thousand years. She wants to she's hang probably, out with her sister. She's probably got a wing in her castle. She <laughs> has that one thing at the top of the castle. Remember that little one room at the very top? That's her. That's her deal. <laughs> anyway, um, I, what, something I want to talk, touch on really quick on the epic battle was like, obviously, we all kind of watched DBC and we got those like, huge feels from lasers and whatever, like the yeah. sense of that. But I also got really, really strong Powerpuff Girls vibes, yes. which I really appreciated yes. because it's the concept of femininity femininity can also be something that is like masculine and fighting because that's pretty much what powerpuff girls did was they took these adorable small little girls and then made it this extremely masculine fighting punching a lot of face punching (laughs) teeth flying out of villains faces and lasers and epicness into something that was feminine like in little girls so it's like there was a lot of scenes that actually pretty much took like a one-two out of the powerpuff girls book so there was one time where um Tyrick did something and then Twilight was like okay now I'm pissed and it zoomed in on her face and the color in the background became a solid color of like something to you know represent emotion or whatnot and like zoomed in on her angry face like that was like Power- Powerpuff Girls 101 like villain does something zooms in on, on bubbles or whatever and she makes a face the background goes a solid color and then she zooms to the villain like starts punching his face in. in this case it was lasers like that exact kind of thing happened and I felt like I was watching a fight from Powerpuff Girls which like Lauren Fowles Powerpuff Girls blah 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 yeah yeah I mean I really appreciated that too yeah, the, well, the whole point, right, what what Lauren Faust was trying to do with this show, you know, mm. from both sides, she was she, she's just trying to break down this whole girl show versus boy show thing. There should just be shows, right? That's yep. that's the, that's what she was trying to get to. And so the way that she tackled that was she took a girl show and she made it into a general thing that everyone can enjoy. And by the same token, what they're saying here is this kind of action crazy thing isn't just for boys shows you know this is also for our show which is a general show you know so they're trying to congregate everything together because these tropes that are generally thought of as as for men's shows and female and and women's shows and all these different things like it's dumb and so Mm -hmm. they're just congregating everything together and saying forget this masculine feminine thing we just have shows and -hmm. whatever is interesting to us is what we're going to show yeah so uh, I wanted to talk about the choice that Twilight is given at the end of the fight because Tyrick says that they're evenly matched. So he offers her uh, either her friends or uh, what was the other option? Um, I can't remember. Or they die, basically. Or, yeah, basically <laughs> or they die. Um, so she chooses the, oh her friends or her magic, basically. Right. Um, and so she offers to give up her magic and get her friends back and she tells him all of her friends including discord so he frees all of them and discord uh and everyone else can't believe that she uh chose to free him even though he betrayed them through that the episode um but it was really like really mature of her especially because like all this time fluttershy has been the one that has been treating discord better and like twilight's been kind of okay with it but like I don't know. This is kind of a big turning point for her. That's cool. I like how she had to tell him, yes, no, Discord as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a conscious. It was a conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So she uh, gets this medallion from Discord, who had gotten it from Tyrick afterwards, or beforehand, and uh, it becomes her key. So they go and they open the box, and inside the box is Rainbow Power. Uh, who would have guessed? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow saved the day again. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, rainbows are awesome. Very yeah. Good. So uh, basically, um, they transform into this these rainbow colored wings and stuff like that, and fight off Tyrick with this big rainbow power thing. And then Twilight gets a castle, and everyone's happy. Tyrick goes back to um, Tartarus, and Cerberus guards him, etc., etc., etc. Bad job. <laughs> that's yeah. how you handle the whole twilight princess thing yeah Man. like i i yeah i think we all liked how twilight was treated as a princess in this episode versus how like surprise princess yeah, yeah i no. know i i uh, i think this this finale kind of wrapped up a lot of different things that were done weaker in in previous seasons so yeah i i, I really enjoyed the episode i thought it was awesome and i can't mm-hmm. wait for season five i know yeah. same i hope discord gets a throne that's like the one thing I'm hoping in the next season that he'll like do something and like 
character progression, and then it would be like, all right, you can have this throne, throne now, and it would be like, yeah. I feel like yeah, a stool uh, or something. Something, something <laughs> starts from the computers. Is it yeah, prob- yeah. Probably not, but like yeah. a man can dream. You can always hope. Something, something, <laughs> Star Wars the period. I'll, I'll write so, my own fan fiction. Before we wrap up, because we are kind of going over on time, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to bring up one point, um, and it's kind of a conspiracy theory that I don't really prescribe to, but like yes, you do. I would, yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, you do. You just you um, just say that so that I I don't roll my eyes. Yeah, exactly. Um, basically, there's a theory out there that Discord kind of knew what he was doing for the majority of the time. Uh, and that he didn't really turn uh, to Tyrek's side. Basically, uh, there's a there's a lot of different points in this because uh, he's the one who showed Twilight the book and like all the uh, introduced her to the keys and stuff like that. Um, when Tyrek tells him in Canterlot to just go wild with his chaos or whatever, he doesn't really do anything. He just plays with the windows and stuff. Uh, he's not really like <laughs> that bad of a character. Right. Like, right. and and so I don't know. There's the, there's a whole kind of thing that like the whole his whole siding with Tyrik was to kind of get Twilight a key to open the box to see what's in the box to get her to her it's princess of friendship hood, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is an interesting theory. I don't know like how well it holds up, but I, I'd like to think that it does. <laughs> mm, he did seem he... genuinely upset though when he was betrayed. Yeah. Yeah, there are, there are like points for and against it. So. I like this. I like to think all those theories are fine, but I also like to think that Discord doesn't know what he's doing half the time, even though like he does have like a purpose yeah. to it. Because yeah. thinking of this omnipotent being of chaos and magic, mm-hmm. like obviously he knows things that no one else knows, but he may not even know them himself. Yeah, and obviously, little girl show benefit of disbelief. Blah blah blah. <laughs> but, yeah. My yeah. my issue with all this stuff, and I, this, I'm saying the final words on this, so because we're ending right after this. <laughs> um, but uh, my theory on all on all of this stuff, there's been previous theories about oh Celestia has always known all along, and it's been her plan, blah blah blah. Every single time is <laughs> a big deal. There, basically, the overwhelming consent is that uh, con- consensus. Sorry, is <laughs> is that um, someone knew about it all along, and this was all, pl- and the solution was planned. <laughs> and the only thing that I have to say with that is. That's nice to think about, and it's really cool to connect these dots. But if it's really true, then it's really lame. So <laughs> I don't want that to be true because it's really fun to see someone actually struggle, as opposed to you go through this whole struggle and then Celestia walks in and is like, "Yeah, by the way, I knew I knew you'd do that." It's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's different levels on it, and and I kind of prescribe to the whole like I like to think that people kind of are somewhat in control at least a little bit and even though like other people don't really know it and i don't know it's it's different strokes for different folks and you know that whole thing i like a show about horsies <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're talking Wrap about we're five minutes over you're i i this is why i i moderate the show because <laughs> this happens yeah okay um so join us next week for our final wrap-up spoiler cast and also for kitty crusaders uh episode 99 99 before that um yeah it's been a fun season man (laughs) and uh we'll hopefully see you guys back for season five when it airs which is hopefully soon ish i have heard it's like early next year that's what they said about this season it started late in 2013 so yep we'll see we'll keep our fingers crossed so thank you guys for joining us uh, whether or not you're in the live stream or on YouTube, Ooh. we love you all the same. Rainbow Plasma loves you all the same. You, you uh, just stole my catchphrase. <laughs> I know I did. And well, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna steal my catchphrase, at least do my job. But my name is Flutterguy317. I'm Rainbow Plasma. I'm Burned on. I'm Atmos Bach. Bye. We'll see love you, you all next the same. week. God damn. Uh, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs>